Hi guys, a uh, big Sunday welcome to you all. Thanks for joining me today for another chat in relation to narcissistic abuse and recovery from it. Today I'd like to talk about two things. Um, I'd like to talk about projection and why the narcissist always has to win. So I'm going to give you a few examples and just see if, if anything resonates with you. Um, it's an interesting subject and the more you delve into the narcissistic personality disorder itself, the more, the more crazy it seems and the more you realise that it's a really maladaptive, destructive, uh, dangerous, diabolical personality disorder that causes the most amount of problems in the world today. And it's really, really important that people know about it because people tend to judge other people um, in their own as they perceive things. And, you know, narcissists can become believable to people if we judge them from our own point of view and the way we perceive the world uh, and their victimhood. You know, if we believe it, believe it and we believe everything they say, it can cause a huge amount of destruction. So we really need to know that people with personality disorders have a different perception of the world and their reality is different from ours. And it's really dangerous not to understand that at this stage. So the narcissist, um, they, they, they start off with a different view on the world and the way it's created is it's added to in each action like as a child when they see that if they maybe don't tell the truth and they manipulate a situation that it works and they go along with that because it's an easy result and they build on those kind of actions over time and they give in to the dark wolf basically they don't they know on a fundamental level that what they're doing is wrong and they don't feel good about themselves and they believe uh, fundamentally that they're a bad person doing this but it's the way they've learned to do things and they feel that it's the only way that they can go through life and defend themselves defend that bad person that's in there and maybe another person or their caregiver made them also feel that they were a bad person but for however it was created um they need to protect their true self. They can't look at their true self. They can't look at that bad person. So the defense mechanism is put up to help them not to see their true selves and to help them believe in the person that they create for the world, the person that they want the world to see. And then they also have to believe in their creation to to bring it to life, to make it real, they have to believe in the false mask. So their their defense mechanism won't let them see the truth of their actions and reality. So how they, you know, we talked about this before, that their defense mechanism is like a shield. And if they actually do something wrong, like for instance, if they cheat, taking a very extreme example, they cheat because they want to get their needs met and for a variety of different reasons. But if you actually accuse them of cheating, you are challenging, challenging them to look inwards at their true self. And that that can't happen. So to them, you're trying to injure them with telling them that they've done something disgusting. So in their view, because their defense mechanism won't let them see their cheating as cheating to them it'll be they'll justify it by i really fell in love with that person and you were treating me so badly that i have developed a relationship with this person so if you're accusing them of cheating they say how disgusting and how dare you say such a thing and if you come up with that idea it must be you that's doing the cheating because they see everyone as their perspective it's quite complicated but it's easy once you understand it so they will take huge offense at you accusing them of such a thing and project it right back on you and say, if you came up with that thought, then you must be cheating yourself. How could you dare accuse them of such a vile act? And then 
with this reframing of reality, they don't have to look inwards at the real person. They can still maintain this person who's always right, who's never wrong about anything and should, should therefore never be challenged on what they believe to be the truth. So that's a bit of projection. They always have to win, as we know, because they've black and white thinking and they can't, if they don't win, they see themselves as a loser. They don't see themselves as a contender who fought a good fight, who, you know, will come the next time maybe and win that situation the next time or that they win in a lot of other areas. So it doesn't make them a loser. For them, it's all or nothing. So if you win something, they're the loser if they were in competition with you for it. And if they're the loser, their false mask that they've created to protect themselves from the world, but also from their true selves, they don't have to look inwards and say, look at their real self and say, well, you didn't win this. You're not good enough and you need to introspect and see if you can make changes to make yourself better. They don't want to do that work. So they protect themselves, their own image, against looking inwards. So they they can't lose. They can't see themselves as a loser, even in reality, if they've lost. And everyone acknowledges that they've lost something. They won't acknowledge that. They will never acknowledge that. So I'll just give you, I'll give you an example of this, like in real life. Supposing you have a company and you have a job advertised and the only people that apply for it are two people within the company. One is a normal person and one is a malignant narcissist. So the competition is fierce and the fight is close and unfortunately the narcissist is told it was a close fight, they did very well, but they don't get the job. This is not acceptable to them. I mean, first of all, they're going to blame the people who are interviewing them for not seeing their potential, but they will say it's a mistake. What they will do then is go on a campaign to hopefully bring that other person down so that they will get the job so that they can they can try they're pathological liars. They'll try anything to do this. They'll start a smear campaign about that person and they'll start a smear campaign about the person that was choosing, you know, the interviewer. And they'll say it was a mistake. This person shouldn't have got the job. They're maybe corrupt. They've done something wrong. And then they will, they will put no evidence forward, but what they will put is, a huge amount of opinion in the company that this person has done something wrong, the person that's actually managed to get the job. And it will get back to the person who is interviewing or else they will make up, they'll show a small instance maybe where that person did something wrong in the company and build on it and let the interviewer know, maybe through a flying monkey, that this isn't the only thing that that person has done, which will throw doubt onto the person who was chosen to get the job. The narcissistic person can't accept that they have lost. They feel they're the true winner. They should have gotten the job. So without going, without labouring the point, guys, I think you can see, you can see how they attack um, having to win at all costs. Now, so they may be successful. They may be successful in turning the opinion of the interviewer and the people that they're talking to against the person who did get the job, which would be a travesty because that person had done nothing wrong other than beat the narcissist in a job interview. The other outcome is that they're not listened to and the person goes on to, you know, be installed in the job in the position of, that they were applying for. The narcissist still in that company will have garnered public opinion to a certain extent or the opinion of the people, other employees within the company and the boss to throw as much doubt uh, on the person who got the job as is possible to make it as difficult for the person who got the job to actually do the job as possible. It's 
it's a vile kind of a, a combination of the narcissist's on, on inability, or not inability, but determination not to accept the reality, the factual reality. And the narcissist will forever, if that person was in the job, say they didn't deserve to get the job, they're corrupt, I'm the one that should have got it and I'm the victim and I'm the underdog. And they will gain a certain amount of support from people who will go with the underdog, for one, for people who maybe have issues in their own life and want something to be angry about and will focus on defending the narcissist. And two, or three, for people that actually don't know about narcissism and, for, and are gullible enough to actually believe that what that narcissist is saying is true. So that's why, guys, it's so important. You're dealing with someone who has a pathology, who doesn't see reality, not, or not only from a faulty perception point of view, but actually from an evidential and factual point of view. They refuse to accept the general norm of reality. It's also highly destructive in that there is no boundaries with narcissists. They will do whatever they need to do for their good, despite it not being for the good of everyone. So they will cause any amount of chaos and destruction just so they can win. It's all about them. They're omnipotent. They can never be wrong. I mean, I remember a time when I was just in the beginning stages of the relationship with the narcissist. And there was something came up, you know, the way you talk about little things. And the thing that came up was the word um, to be in cahoots with someone. Now, I never looked it up in the dictionary, but I always understood it to be if you're in cahoots with someone, you're planning and um, scheming about something, probably against some situation. But the two of you are planning together um, secretly. You're in cahoots. And he was saying, I can't be at cahoots with her. And I remember saying, but you can't be at cahoots with someone. You're in cahoots with them. Anyway, it was a moot point. But he was determined to prove me wrong. And even after looking up the dictionary explanation, he still insisted that the term was at cahoots with someone. Even to this day, and even in the discard, a year later, he used the term. I, at the time, just thought that it was fascinating that it was such a little thing that he wouldn't accept a correction on. And the other thing that fascinated me was, just bringing some of my own personal experience into it, was that I remember we, we had other little discussions like this. And I remember jokingly kind of saying to him, I guess you're right about everything. And he said, yes, I am. And I said, I'm only kidding, like, you know, I'm only kidding. And he said, well, I am. I said, are you saying to me that you, you believe that you're right about everything? And he says, yes, I am. And afterwards, like about an hour later, I said, you know, I mean, you, you can be real with me now. I know we were having that conversation, but you can give me, you know, tell me you're joking with me. And he said, I wasn't joking with you. And at that point, I should have run for the hills. I should have run for the hills. You're talking to somebody who's saying that they are right about everything. And I didn't. I just, I put it down as being an idiosyncrasy or a little character trait, an unusual character trait in this person. It was a huge sign of pathology. But as we know, we do, we ignore red flags. Let's not get into it, that in this video. The main thing is that the narcissist cannot look inward. Their narcissism has been set up to protect them against the outside world, but also to protect them against their internal world. So it's a shield against both. They have to believe in the mask and they have the world has to believe in the mask and they believe very evilly that they will not look at the truth 
they actually believe that their truth is the truth, that they are God, that what they decide is the truth is the truth, despite a huge amount of factual evidence otherwise, they will go along that trajectory no matter how much destruction or chaos it causes. Now, the truth does come out in the end, but if we don't recognise the narcissistic personality disorder in our world today, for a certain amount of time, a certain amount of people will be fooled and will be pitted against other people or against the real truth. Because the, the narcissist is so manipulative and can carry a huge amount of weight by keying into people's issues and bringing them along on their platform because they understand how people can be, be manipulated for their own personal gain, no matter how much destruction is caused by their pursuit of their belief in their omnipotence. That's it, guys. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. Do share it if you think it's relevant. I do think it's relevant in the world today for people to understand the mal malignant narcissist and the damage they can cause if we don't understand it. Guys, have a blessed Sunday. I'm going out for a walk now. I'll do another walkie-talkie soon and take care of yourselves in the meantime. Getting to know so many of you now through the comments and I feel feel that we're all part of something good. Thanks, guys. Have a blessed day. Bye.